These entitled parents have formed an alliance to take down anyone they want at their school, but their days of ruling are numbered as a brave soul decides to return with some pro revenge. Happy birthday, today's your birthday and on with the revamp show. My sister has been a third grade teacher for a few years now. During this time in the school year, the science subject is on the solar system. There was a student who showed up after winter break, and already there had been problems with this entitled parent. One being that her son is vegan, and she doesn't want her precious baby touching anything made from animals. According to my sister, the kid was a really good student and was very generous to other classmates. Having a crazy mother like this and still being a genuine person is amazing. I still have hope for this generation. My sister and I usually joke about anti-vaxxers, entitled parents, crazy students and so on. But I swear this is the first one that is Reddit worthy. Also, we live in Canada, so there are no security guards or police in schools, let alone elementary school. Yeah. My sister goes over how the class will be learning about the solar system while passing around worksheets for the students to complete. I'll skip the boring stuff, but she brings out a diagram with multiple balls hanging from a piece of wood to demonstrate where the planets are located and their size comparison to each other, blah blah blah. At the end of the lesson, my sister proceeds to assign a worksheet so when they get home, they're able to go onto their school website. I don't know, it is a website so kids don't have to go on YouTube. It is just for educational videos, that kind of website, and they watch a video about the solar system and fill the worksheet out for the next day. This is when all hell broke loose. My sister goes into work the next day. Just a regular day, right? Nope. She is drinking her coffee in the teacher's lounge, getting ready to head to her classroom, since there is only 10 minutes until the bell rang. Then the receptionist lets her know that there is a parent who would like to talk to her. She thought this was weird since parents usually book appointments or email her. Since this student just arrived a few months ago, my sister has never met this lady until now. As she walked into the main office area, she came across this nasty looking lady. Like seriously guys, my sister described her as an ugly Phoebe from Friends. Crazy hippie clothing and all. You could smell the essential oils from the other room. Hey kiddo, how are you this morning? Is everything? The entitled mother didn't even let her finish. Hi, yes. I need to have a word with you. Normally an appointment is necessary. What is this regarding? You gave my son this. Being very dramatic as she whips the solar system worksheet out of her son's bag and slamming it on the counter. Ma'am, I'm sorry, I don't understand. That was assigned to the students to complete for today's lesson. Of course you don't understand. Why would you? I would just like to let you know that what you are teaching Teaching my child is wrong. You can't just be filling their head with lies, you know. You've got some nerve telling my son to watch conspiracy videos about the earth. Ma'am, I can tell you're upset, but I really have no idea what you're talking about. Do you realize you are teaching these kids false information? The entitled mum continues rambling on about how my sister was brainwashing kids. My sister still doesn't know what the heck is happening. The principal hears the entitled mum yelling at my sister and asked, what is happening? Why are your teachers corrupting children into thinking the earth is round? All my friends warned me about these evil public schools. I knew I should have homeschooled my boy. The principal and my sister give each other a very confused, is this lady for real? Look. My sister finally realizes this stupid lady is a flat earther. Okay ma'am, I think there has been a misunderstanding. You see, the solar system is a required unit that all schools teach. I don't want to hear your right wing propaganda. I will get both of you fired. I cannot believe you are talking to me this way. I want to homeschool my boy from now on. All you ignorant jerk faces are all the same. By now, the entitled mum has been rambling for a good eight minutes and the bell is about to ring. But because this mother was entitled, guess what? She couldn't care less. All right, we'll take your feelings into consideration, but the bell is going to ring and miss my sister and your son need to start heading to their classroom. Yes, feel free to send me an email and I'll be sure to get back to you. The entitled mum blocked the door so no one was able to get out. This poor kid has to put up with this whack job as a mother. He's just calmly sitting on a chair in the office like this is normal for him. Nope, I demand that you either teach these children that the earth is a disc or don't teach them about the earth at all. You need to understand, it is in the curriculum. I cannot simply stop teaching it just because you think that the world is flat. Uh, wrong move, sis. Excuse me? 
What did you just say to me? You people, that is discrimination and I will be pressing charges. Do you know what a hate crime will get you? Do you? Apologize. The principal was starting to get frustrated and my sister was just in shock and the bell rings. Kids are now storming the halls and there are some students who come to the office to borrow fidget toys. It's like a library for kids who struggle with ADHD, concentration, anxiety and other learning disabilities. I'm going to have to ask you to leave. You've got to be freaking kidding me right now. Oh, please don't swear, there are children around. Now please leave, I have a class to teach. Okay ma'am, I need you to leave right now. You are acting extremely irrational and this will not be tolerated. I don't give a frick what's tolerated. Shove your solar system up your fat butt. I will absolutely not have my son brainwashed with conspiracies. What, are you also corrupting these children into thinking gravity is real too? Huh? What about eating animals? The students can't even get into the office because the big ol' hippie entitled mum is blocking the door. These kids are confused as heck. It is probably their first encounter with an anti-vax vegan flat earther drenched in essential oils. You can't be shouting. If you don't leave, I will call the police. Frick the school system, frick you, points at my sister, and frick you, points at the principal. I am taking my son and I will let everyone know how this school is trying to fill our kid's head with Nazi propaganda. Entitled Mom grabs her son's hand and aggressively drags him out of the school, cursing and purposely pushing kids and knocking over everything in her path. This is one of both the joys and the tragedies of the internet. The ability to be able to freely express information with anyone in the world is amazing. However, of course, there's also misinformation and disinformation. Having a free internet means we're gonna have people who are crazy like this, who don't really understand what's really going on. However, what's the alternative? The only other alternative is a small group of people people who get to decide what information everybody else gets to listen to. And personally, I'd much prefer a free internet with a few crazies than the potential for a few crazies controlling the whole internet. Because this is the thing most people don't think about. What if someone like that mum was the one who got to decide what information was on the internet or not? I used to work at a big chain store in the deli department. Wasn't a great job, but it was my first one and it helped me pay for college, so I endured it. But because of what I was subjected to, I quit shortly after, despite it having a great end result. In my hometown, population of 4,500, there was this small group of PTA mums who were pretty high up on the chain of command, but also led their own company for party planning. They're known mostly for the fact their daughters are all best friends and are straight A 4.0 students, and all three were supposed to be valedictorians. I knew them mostly because they were the we hate drama crowd, but always spread drama about people. Unfortunately, it had happened to me at one point and put me into some pretty deep depression, but that's for another story. Not just that, but all three daughters were accepted to Ivy League schools on a full ride scholarship. The one fault they had, besides the drama, was that they were really arrogant, prideful people, both the daughters and the mothers, and were incredibly rude to anyone who wasn't rich, white, or even super in shape. At the time, I was pretty overweight and had a pretty bad acne problem. This will come into play later. Well, one day, they came in asking for 300 pieces of fried chicken and 200 pinwheel sandwiches. For anyone who has worked in any capacity of retail or food, you know that for an order that big, we need at least a couple days notice to order more inventory and actually cook everything on time. Not to mention, I was the only one left working for the night, so their order would have been impossible anyway. Well, these ladies thought they could pick it up on the spot to ensure food quality. I told them that they would need to fill out an order form and that it would be a couple of days and they lose their minds. I'm not talking a small sigh of disbelief, I'm talking vague threats to actually have me not walk during graduation. Here is how the talk basically went. Um, I need this food today. We are the party planners of the lake party you probably didn't get invited to and the party is in two hours. I'm sorry, but we literally don't have the staff all the time for that right now. I'm more than happy to make you a 96 piece, but it'll take take about an hour. You think that's freaking funny? Do you know who I am? No, I don't. Yeah, we are the official party planners of hometown. We also run the high school PTA, so our daughters probably know you. You don't want your image tarnished, do you? Brushing off the vague
vague threat of using her daughter. That's pretty cool actually. Sounds like a cool job, but there is just no way for 300 pieces and 200 pinwheels to be done in the amount of time you want. I apologize for any inconvenience it makes for you. If you want, I'm more than happy to get a manager so they can talk to you. When your man should get here, I'm going to have you freaking fired and kicked out of the walking this year. We don't want fatties taking up the walkway anyway. I don't know how they knew I was a senior. Ma'am, I'm sorry, but I will not tolerate that kind of threat and I'm gonna have to ask you to leave now. But we didn't get our food yet. I'm sorry, but like I stated before, it would not be possible to complete that task. And with the way I was treated, I have the right to refuse service to you anyway. Have a good day. You will be hearing from us, you fat frick. I hope our daughters don't know anything dirty about you. The manager walks out. Excuse me, ladies, but you have no reason to treat my staff like that. You may think you run this town, but that does not give you any reign to treat someone like that. Frick you, they said while they started walking out. A few days go by, and I haven't heard anything from either of them or my manager. Then one day at class, I see the daughters in a corner crying with each other. I got word from one of their friends who was somewhat close with them that in the past two days, they were told they could no longer walk at graduation due to being caught for cheating on basically every assignment and were no longer attending any Ivy League school. At first, I thought this was just a coincidence to what occurred the week prior, but apparently what happened was that a bystander overheard the heated exchange and this bystander also happened to be a former member of the PTA. Also, she had a lot of dirt on the mothers and their children. Apparently, this was her breaking point as she was skeptical to come forward prior about many things due to scrutiny. It turns out the mothers were basically getting the answers to every assignment by either paying off teachers, using vague threats against their families. Because our school was smaller, there were only a handful of teachers that needed to be pleased or threatened. That was my moment of happiness. Not only did those women get kicked out of the PTA, but their daughters, who I mentioned used to be my old bullies, were dropped from ever attending the school of their dreams. Last I heard, the daughters stayed in the hometown and now work in the same deli department I used to work in. I think the thing that's sadly revealed in this story is that there are probably a lot of people out there who cheat and threaten others to get ahead. And there are some out there who'd have dirt on them, but they're too afraid to come forward. So it's nice to hear a story where their sins are actually brought to light and we get to see some sweet pro revenge. You just know that those daughters would have been the types that would have looked down on other people, especially the hero of the story working in the deli store. I wonder if she ever visits that deli store and goes into order from them. That would be the ultimate cherry on top. You know the hero of our story is pretty cluey too, because as soon as she started noticing there was danger, she preemptively said, hey, I can bring my manager out if you want. She knows when she's talking to a group of Karens. I'm a freelance hiking and snowmobile guide on the island of Svalbard, Norwegian Arctic, and have to deal with all sorts of people on a day-to-day -day basis. I'm not sure if this guy still qualifies as an entitled dad, since his son must have been at least 40, but here we go. A few months ago, I was guiding a trip by myself. We only send one guide out when the group is small, so I went to the hotels to pick up my guests, an Italian couple and this Saudi Arabian father, entitled dad and son combo. I walked into their hotel, introduced myself, and got everybody to sit in the car. When Entitled Dad opened the passenger seat door, sat down and looked at me confused. Oh, sorry, this is your seat, right? No, you can sit there if you want. It's easier to drive from the other side anyway. I always try to crack a joke or two to break the ice. Lots of people are nervous when having to drive a snowmobile for the first time. He looked at me slightly more confused, but I assumed it's only a language thing. Brought them back to headquarters and gave them a full safety briefing and overview on a map on where we'd be going. After that, I got them dressed and told them to wait outside because our suits are made to keep you warm at negative 30 degrees Celsius. So inside a building, you quickly start to melt. Once I was dressed, I went to meet them outside. Oh, you're coming with us on tour? I hope so, since I'm your guide. I had told them in the briefing the usual. Hey, my name is Kat and I'll be your guide for today. Is that a gun? Yes, sir, but don't worry. She's not yet loaded. Entitled dad and son looked at each other confused. 
confused, and we all started walking towards the snowmobiles so I could give them a small briefing on how to drive them. The Italians had told me they have been driving before, so I decided to place them in the end of the group and entitled dad and son in the front. Everybody got to drive their own vehicle, because out of experience, it's always better for the more experienced guests to be at the back, since they might have to speed up here and there to fill a gap. But where is the guide? Here, I'm just in front of you. A proud 1.77 meters. Hard to miss. But you're a female. Guides can't be female. Hmm. About 50% of our guides are girls here on Svalbard. It's not that uncommon. Don't worry. We girls are just as good as our male colleagues. I think my father wants to know who will operate the gun. Well, let's hope we don't even have to take it out of the boot. But if we have, I am trained and licensed to shoot. No. No? You're a woman. Women can't shoot guns. It's not safe. Excuse me? Guys, if you don't want me as your guide, that's fine with me. Go back to headquarters. Take the suit off and tell our receptionist to call you a taxi. If you don't feel safe, that's up to you. But I am the guide for this trip today, and if you want to head out, you'll have to deal with me. But if we don't go, we want our money back. You can try, but I bet you that you won't get a penny because it's your own decision to not come along. I will go if you get a male guide for us. I won't get anybody else to join. You've signed the agreement that I'm in charge of this tour and you will listen to what I tell you to do and not to do. I didn't sign anything. Yes, about 15 minutes ago, before you got dressed, I saw you sign it. Entitled Dad then walks back into HQ. Son and the Italians stayed. Son called his dad, found out that Entitled Dad would not come with a woman. Son and the Italians drove with me. We saw reindeer, sea ice, a polar bear in the distance. No need for the rifle and in general had a great time. After the tour, the son came to me to apologize for his behavior and called me a good girl guide. My boss heard that and still mocks me with it today. We're finishing on another story where there's hope for the next generation. That's always good. And that's the thing is that everybody's raised with something that's a little bit quirky that's not quite right. But it's your responsibility to think for yourself critically about what are the things that your society taught you or your parents taught you, that the values that you hold, if they actually hold up in the reality that we live in. The prejudice that they showed exists in all kinds of countries and cultures, and considering the country that he came from only lifted the ban on women driving like in the past couple years, like good on the kid for jumping over that hurdle and actually apologizing. If we want to see a more civil society, and one with less entitled parents, it's only going to come from rationalizing your worldview through civil conversation with those you disagree with. And if you pay any attention to the media, that seems like something that's seriously lacking in our society. Submit your story to be read on the channel at voiceyhearstories at gmail.com and join our Voicey Veteran community at r slash voiceyhear. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode. Alright Voicey Veterans, I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.